Hey everyone, welcome to the Productivity Academy Weekly Q&A number 38. So we are rolling right along. It is the very end of May, tomorrow's June. And before we get started, I just want to say if you're watching on Facebook, uh, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to stay up to date and get notifications for updates like these uh, or new videos on the channel. Um, and then as well, if you're watching this inside of the Facebook group, thanks for uh, watching, thanks for being here. And leave me a comment or a question. I'll also be looking over here off screen occasionally uh, to see if any questions come in live. Uh, if you're not in the Facebook group yet, you can join. It's a free group uh, if you're interested in productivity, organization, time management, improving your processes, things like that. Then that's a great place for you. Uh, you can grab the link, I'm sure, below and join us there. All right. So today we've got some good questions. Uh, I've got a little bit of a personal question slash example I want to use. Uh, some ideas about tips for young entrepreneurs to improve productivity and time management. Um, a good one, not so much productivity, but what is one piece of simple advice that actually changed your life? And then how are you increasing the value of your time or my time as an entre entrepreneurial business person? So got some good questions too, and eventually I'm going to actually put these back here to use. Uh, but as you can tell, I've changed locations, moving, and then really looking forward to getting these um, to use. Um, for videos. I, I'm obviously using them. If you've seen my past videos, I guess over here, I uh, did some expectation value actions where go through and say, okay, what are the you know projects or big tasks I'm looking at or working on? And then assigning values to those. And I only really look at, at three things, how excited I am personally, you know, whether it's excited for the outcome or excited to work on it or whatever it is, uh, assigning just some value to that between one and five. And then uh, doing the same for short-term ROI. Uh, literally, what is the ROI? And again, it could be if it's um, you know riding my bike every day or something. That's not necessarily a return monetarily on investment, but assigning it just a value in terms of if it's exercise, maybe it's uh, the, what I'm most excited to spend my time doing, or if it's business related, you know what's the short term actual uh, monetary ROI, and then long term. And this varies, you know, for you, for me, what, however we want to define it. But just looking at those three areas, how excited am I? Uh, what's the short-term return on investment and what's the really long-term return on investment? And then you kind of exponentially increase those values and divide and to get a number, all right? And the whole reason you do this is not, um, you know, because it's fun, which it kind of is, but it's to get all that stuff out of your head and to give it a concrete value. It forces you to do a little deciding, hey, is, uh, go back to the example of riding my bike. Is riding my bike every day more exciting to me or is it, going for a swim and which one's going to have the biggest payoff and where should I focus my time and helping you decide that instead of holding the stuff in your head because we have that tendency to just you know accumulate these ideas and they're they're not bad ideas but we truly can only focus so much whether it's spending our time exercising um, whether it's business projects uh, meeting people whatever it is and so I found this to be really helpful once a month once every quarter at the least to go through and do this exercise so I will post a link to that. Uh, I know I made a video about it with uh, the worksheet. And so if you're interested in that, I highly recommend it. It's a great exercise uh, personally, and then I think too for uh, businesses as well. So back to the questions. Um, before we get into those, though, I had uh, something happen this weekend that I thought was really interesting. So um, I enjoy getting out. I love being around people, for, uh, but I'm definitely not um, an extroverted extrovert. And so we had friends come into town and, you know, it, it was tough in the sense that, uh, you know, they were here for several days over a long weekend. They were there for an, or came for an extra day and uh, we had already made some plans, had a lot going on. And I was, you know, starting to feel that stress, right? Where you're like, ah, oh, I already had things on my book I needed to do. I've got my calendar. Uh, you know, and the opportunity was there to just blow it all off or to become overwhelmed by trying to do too much. And so I think it's really important uh, if you have time to plan to go ahead and plan those out. And I look back and we didn't do a great job of saying, hey, OK, we've got a few days before they show up. Uh, we know uh, that, you know, for example, we weren't planning on uh, having people here for four days. We were thinking, too, what can we do to alleviate this and be up front? Uh, about it. And a little bit of planning and communication right there really goes a long way. And so we went into the weekend and I will say that the one thing that really helped again, uh, and I just, you know, of course love talking about this is the daily planning and whether, you know, you sit down with your journal and do some full out thing or you got your calendars 
but just sitting down and spending as much time as you can. And some days, maybe when you're busy and you have family in town or you have friends visiting, that's two minutes and just saying, okay, you know what? I looked at my task list. I know I'm not going to get hardly any of this done, but there's one thing I have to get done today. Uh, you know, I've got to make either make this phone call. I've got to carry out, carry out this task. I'm going to email that person. Uh, and then the rest of the day, we're going to be doing these things. No, that's right. They really want to do this one thing. So write that down. And just going through those emotions will help you so much instead of just blowing it off. And, you know, I'm still guilty of that from time to time, especially when we were moving and, and forgetting or just being lazy and saying, ah, you know, I don't need to do that from time to time. And then that really catches up with you, whether you miss important uh, things that you had, you know, told yourself you wouldn't forget. But again, falling back on that system so that the system can support you instead of just relying on your brain. So. Anyways, interesting weekend in terms of planning and seeing the systems at work and feeling overwhelmed at times, but realizing, oh, okay, you know what? Things are actually fine, uh, going well. So I ended up having a good weekend in terms of, you know, getting to see friends and also realizing, hey, I do need to spend some time working, being upfront about that and continuing the, the little daily planning cycle. So a little insight into the craziness and you know, it's not all uh, organized down to the minute or anything like that. You know, like everyone else, we've got to make changes and adapt to the situation. And if your systems or processes don't uh, don't work for you that way, um, then you need to make them work that way. All right. Or, you know, if you want to live a more rigid lifestyle and make other things flexible, then, you know, you can make it work that way, too. All right. So what are some great tips for a young entrepreneur to improve productivity and time management? I think that's a uh, really good question for many reasons. And I can only, uh, for me, I can look back at uh, when I was younger and then some of the younger people I've talked to as well, uh, getting in and, and being involved as an entrepreneur. And I'm going to take this kind of from the standpoint of you're more in control of your time, uh, pretty much, unless, you know, if you're doing that on the side, however you want to view it. Uh, but I think a lot of younger people I've met and myself too, this is heavily from myself when I was younger, you're not, uh, so uh, I guess uh, I wasn't uh, seeing the, the power of routines and processes um, at that time. You, I understood it, um, but, you know, I figured I a lot of times didn't need them and I didn't see the underlying power of having routines, processes that you can build up over time. And, you know, you pay for that, whether it's, uh, you know, blood, sweat and tears or wasted time. Uh, you know, a lot of that is going to help you. So I think just doing some basic learning, um, whether it's reading books like Work the System or um, getting a calendar, if you don't use a calendar, uh, you know, using uh, time management, time blocking, coming up with a system, though, and being regular about it and having a routine. And again, you can, like I was saying earlier, you can make this flexible and make it work for you, uh, but establishing those early and having that um, that routine and if you you know I always talk about a daily routine and I think that's a great one to have in the morning is to sit down go through your day um, and then do a wrap up in the evening but establishing that early and finding what works for you uh, again maybe it's 15 minutes maybe it's 30 but that'll help you as you grow uh, you know whether it's a career it's a business it's several businesses um, that'll pay off over time because creating these own processes for yourself will help you implement those in the business and help you grow um, let's see. I think as far as young entrepreneur to improve productivity and time management. Yeah, I think that's uh, the number one is take the time to start giving yourself routines and processes. And this doesn't mean living your life, you know, uh, planned down to the minute, uh, but being regular, taking regular action. And I guess the other thing I would say is uh, take some time to learn. You know, we're, no one's born with this stuff. Uh, you know, get out there. If it's an hour a week, 30 minutes a week. Um, you know, if you can master or become over time your own master of time management and your productivity, then, I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. So I would say invest some time back into yourself. Um, it could be something so simple as once a week sitting down and saying, what worked well for me? What didn't? Literally write it down. Um, you know, okay, well, if it's not working well, can I either fix it? Can I trash it, delete it? Or can I delegate it? And then, you know, what's working well? How can I double down? How can I get more results like that? And then beyond that, saying, okay, can I look outside of my immediate uh, area? Can I learn from someone? Can I read a book? Can I take a course? Can I get a mentor? Things like that. I think that'll help. Good question. What is one piece of simple advice that actually changed my life? 
that is a tough question and it's definitely one where I wish I would have uh, thought about it some more ahead of time because there's so many good ones but I'm just going to go with my gut on this one and that is uh, something that what my father told me and that was the very short version of this is you regret the things that um, you left undone or you didn't do okay meaning if you do something and not in a bad way, right? If you've done something, I mean, in this case, too, it works. If you do something bad or against someone, okay, that's don't do that. But, you know, you can work to apologize. You can work on that. Um, but the idea is, let's say you, you tried to do something or you did something and it didn't turn out correctly or went poorly. You can fix that. You can learn from that and you can try. But the things that you never do, you never attempt, you never get a second chance right you never did it and you'll never know okay and there's so many things where this uh, takes place whether it's business you didn't you try you, you know you you let people talk you down from something um, or personal you know you didn't reach out and tell someone hey you know what you did a really good job on this project um, you know what uh, your partner your spouse you know I love you you did this that those types of situations where you know we end up uh, you know, wishing that we would have said something and you never realize sometimes how much of an impact you can have on that person's life, whether again, it's spouse, team member, um, an employee, something like that. This can, you know, really help. So pretty simple advice, but I think it goes a long way and it's a good one to remember on the, the day to day. All right. So let's see. Last question for today. How are you increasing the value of your time as an entrepreneurial business person? Uh, there's a definite answer to this. Increasing the value of my time has been done by uh, creating a team. And I'd like to say that it's been done in a very systematic way, but it hasn't. Uh, and it's becoming more systematic over time, which is what a lot of this is about, is learning what works for yourself, building the processes, building these systems. And now as I'm building out a larger team and saying, okay, I've got my assistant who's also a project manager, and then finding the roles underneath that as we need them. Okay, and right now that's fulfilled by a couple of VAs, um, and then we do some contract work as needed for either, you know for making content, or we need some work done on a website or a sales funnel, whatever it is. But that's increasing my time because that allows me, as I build the team and the processes, like those things really do go together because I can't just throw stuff at them and hope for the best. If I do, I can tell you how it's going to turn out. It's not good, but you work, I work with them to build the processes or if something I've done, I show them how to do it. We write it down, we record it, we refine it. And then as time goes on, they get better and better and better at that. And I get to spend my time doing higher level work, whether that's finding customers, whether that's uh, actually dealing with the business. How can I grow a business? How can I uh, work on the marketing, things like that, where, you know, meeting with people, okay, these are, you know, using things that I'm highly skilled at, that someone else literally could not take my place, and getting those things um, off of my plate, where if someone can replace me, you know, I, it's like, oh, I like writing, I can make, uh, I like uh, writing up emails and doing some content, but someone else can do that, and they can probably do it better than I can, so replacing myself uh, where possible, and where it makes sense, and kind of elevating myself up, uh, but still, you know, being involved in the day-to-day, -day, it's an interesting one. And the balance that I, I enjoy uh, working on is finding out where can you remove yourself or where should you remove yourself from areas uh, and where should you still be involved. So ongoing question on that one, but that's, uh, that's how I view it. So I don't see any more questions uh, today, so I'll just wrap it up real quick with saying that those are some uh, great questions. If you haven't joined the Rural Productivity Growth Group on Facebook, uh, just click on the link below. You can join and uh, just answer the, the few quick questions there. Want to make sure you're actually interested in organization, productivity, uh, time management, all that good stuff, and uh, come join and, and attend these live. And if you're watching this on YouTube, by all means, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have questions, uh, you can ask in the comments or, uh, again, join the group and ask there. So thanks for checking it out. I'll be back next week.